Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Logan Parker and this is Heirloom Builders. So this is one thing that you can do to really improve the quality of your slab floor. This is a key step to under slab preparation um, and it only actually takes like an hour and a half. It probably doesn't even take any longer, quite frankly, than just sitting here raking the gravel back and forth and siting it. It's much faster to get it pretty close to where you need it and then screed the gravel off. Today we're on the Fogwell family farm working on the under slab preparations for the straw bale house that we're building. As you can see, we've got a concrete foundation wall and a gravel pad inside that foundation wall that's going to be our base for our concrete slab floor. Now our goal here is to get this gravel as level and flat as possible and what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to pinpoint a continuous four inch thick slab that's evenly four inches throughout the entire span of this entire floor so that it is much more resistant to cracking and we can calculate with precision accuracy how much concrete we're going to need so that we don't have way too much concrete or just a little bit less than we need which would be catastrophic um, so what we do is we use this little screed board over here and we set up string lines on the top of the foundation wall because that top of the foundation wall is also the top of our slab floor. So we run a string from one side to the other We use it, and then we use that string as a guide for our screed board to rake out and screed the gravel nice and flat in six foot wide increments. Um, so the first thing that we do is we we cut a seven foot long board to make sure we got at least six feet. And then we add a, in this case, we are, we have a four inch slab and then two inches of rigid foam insulation underneath that slab. So we have six inches below the surface of that, below the top of that foundation wall that we're trying to get this gravel to. Now we want to make sure that we're at least four inches. So we're actually going to shoot for four and a quarter inches plus the two inches of foam is six and a quarter. Okay, cool. So that's six and a quarter. That's four inches of slab, two inches of foam, and a quarter inch of wiggle room. Now when we run this plate compactor and pack it down, that's going to pack an extra half inch out of the depth of that gravel. So instead of six and a quarter, we're gonna bump that up and roughly rake out our gravel to five and three quarters so that when we pack a half inch down, we'll end up with a six and a quarter inch depth. With two inches of foam, we're gonna end up with a four to four and a quarter inch thick slab continuous all the way across. So in order to, this, so in order to get this two by four, which you can grab with your hand pretty easily, to work as a screed, we add a two by four on top and notch out an extra, let's see, three and a half plus two and a quarter is gonna get us five and three quarter from the top of the foundation wall. So this piece right here is gonna ride on top of that foundation wall. And then this other side is gonna run we're shooting for about a quarter inch underneath the string from top to bottom. So if our string is set at the top of foundation wall and we want five and three quarter below that string, we really want five and a half below that string. So we're, we're gonna rip a two inch wide piece and screw that down to the top of this three and a half inch wide two by four to get a five and a half inch depth. If we, if we run it tight to that string um, and not give it a quarter inch, we don't know if we're, if we're pushing that string up. It's always look like it's tight to the top of the board. So we want to just keep a quarter inch reveal. That's enough space um, that we can be a little bit low. We're going to see the difference between a half inch and a quarter inch pretty easily. If we went an eighth 
it's going to be too tough and you're constantly going to have to be fixing it. So we shoot for a quarter inch lower than the string and then just sight down that string. And when I'm pulling this screed board across the gravel, I'm keeping an eye on where that string is. That string should be riding a quarter inch high above the top edge right here. And then I know that our gravel is going to be set at five and three quarters below top of slab. Um, so this is one thing that you can do to really improve the quality of your slab floor. This is a key step to under slab preparation. Um, and it only actually takes like an hour and a half. It probably doesn't even take any longer, quite frankly, than just sitting here um, raking the gravel back and forth and sighting it. It's much faster to get it pretty close to where you need it and then screed. And as you screed the gravel, you're gonna end up making a pile of gravel. So it's really nice to have two people screeding and then one person raking gravel away. That makes it go really fast. And you can kind of keep an eye on it to make sure that if there's any low spots underneath the screed board, you can rake gravel in to fill those up and kind of go back and re-screed. Sometimes it takes a couple of passes to get it exactly where you like it. But it's time well spent making sure that you get a consistently even four inch thick slab that's gonna be very resistant to cracking. And then you're gonna also know that when you put that foam insulation on top of this gravel back here, that you're not gonna have big old dips and high spots that once your foam is down, you gotta pull the foam back, you know, and, it, and you measure down to make sure your slab is four inches thick. If you have a high spot, it's gonna make it really challenging to get it down low. You got to pull that foam back off and rake down the gravel again. It's just so much easier to screed this gravel flat and level in the very beginning. Um, one big point that, that I wanna make is the type of stone. There's, we use number 78 stone, it's pea gravel, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is that it's really easy to rake out, shovel, and work with, um, and screed nice and flat. The second is, you can see our plumbers are getting going on the under slab plumbing back here. And you can see how easy it is to shovel this gravel. If we had really thick, heavy stone, it makes it really difficult to work with. And in fact, it won't pass inspection if you bed pipe in anything bigger than pea gravel. It's just too coarse and angular and it might bust the pipe. So you need a pea gravel or sand to bed your plumbing pipe in. So we're gonna just kind of work our way down this gravel pad, screeding everything flat, and then we're gonna come back with this plate compactor and pack it all super flat and tight. And then we're gonna be ready to mark where our plumbing's gonna go, go ahead and trench that in, dig our thickened footers, and put our vapor barrier, foam, hydronics, and be ready for concrete. So a couple quick tips on under slab prep will get you looking really good. It's gonna save you concrete. It's gonna make sure that you have a super high quality slab. And I hope this was helpful. So um, if so, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel because we're gonna be following this whole entire process. I hope you join us. Thanks for watching y'all. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.